So welcome uh, to the audiences and, of course, to the writers. Um, Tom and me, we are the moderators of this uh, panel. It will um, take us more or less two hours. Yes. And uh, we are re referring to the statements you wrote. And uh, we want to talk with you about uh, the conditions of queer writing, uh, the publishing, and the reception. So, yeah, we're not going to introduce everybody on the panel because uh, you can find the bi biographies in the reader and everything. So, um, I'll just quickly go from uh, left to from my left to right, and I, I suppose your left to right. And we have Bojan Krivokapic from. Serbia, uh, Lela Kalamudic from Bosnia and Herzegovina, or possibly ex-Yugoslavia, maybe we're going to talk about that. Um, Kristina Hocema from Slovenia, um, Natalka Sinjadanko from Ukraine, uh, Sergei Khasov kasia from Russia, um, Nikolai Boykov from Bulgaria, and Adrian Skrop from Romania. Welcome to all of you. Um, we're going to try and get everybody on the panel to talk to each other rather than to us. But um, any time you've got a question or you'd like to comment on anything, just um, yeah, it's, it's probably going to be difficult to signal us. But <laughs> maybe we can get some sort of feedback from the panel if you just wave your hand and we have a microphone, we can get to you. And um, yeah, <laughs> ideally we'll talk as, as uh, little as possible. And the opening question to all of you is, what does it mean to you in your homeland uh, to be a queer or lesbian or gay writer? Is it uh, necessary uh, or important for uh, uh, identification? Ah, she's please look. <laughs> so the question is, what, is the, what does it mean to be a writer? A queer. <laughs> what does it mean for us to be a writer? So it isn't important for you. Sorry? To be a queer writer or? A queer writer. Yes. Well, I can say. I, I, <coughs> I honestly str struggle still. I, I issued two books. I published two books. But still, I in sort of, um, I can't call myself writer because writer for me in my imagination is something big like Leo Tolstoy and Victor Hugo. Um, so I'm, I, I de identify myself as a journalist. Uh, first of all, because I work for uh, Radio for Europe in Moscow. Um, to be a queer writer, um, I think it's a bit a, of a niche sort of identification because I don't know about others, but I feel like my audience is sort of limited by LGBTQ readers and the uh, people related to them. Uh, so I think uh, being LGBT writer is, yeah, it's interesting, it's challenging, but still uh, you feel yourself sort of limited in the audiences <coughs> that you speak to. Right. Ако аз имам проблем, то моят проблем не е с писателството, защото аз мисля, че съм писател, а по-скоро с определението кои е писател. Тоест, аз съм мъж, който прави любов и любовта с мъже, но се смятам съм, че съм писател, който пише за някакви неща, които е осъзнал и осмислил в своя живот. If I have a problem, I, uh, it's not a problem... It's a problem with the term being a writer. I think I'm just a man who is in love and who is writing stories about love. And it doesn't matter whether I'm a writer or not. I'm just a single being. Uh, for me, uh, I think that to be a queer writer in Bosnia means, first of all, that uh, the others label you like that. You are a queer writer. And that's, uh, I think, the, the main point, and that after that you know where you can publish your work and where you cannot. That's uh, <coughs> in Serbia, is similar like in Bosnia, so not so good uh, with these uh, topics and questions. Uh, I think uh, for me it's important uh, in literary text to try to open some questions 
uh, related to the uh, questions of uh, hierarchy, uh, power position, uh, relations in society, uh, and I think that uh, queer in is uh, the one possible way how to write, how to open that questions, how to write about this. So in that sense, I can say yes, I'm queer writer, but also I'm a feminist writer, I'm post yugoslav writer, uh, and I love to write. I think yeah, this is important. <laughs> Um, well, I do consider myself being a writer, well, a poet. Um, when I published my first book in 2004, uh, I was struggling with the fact that I wanted to be clear that I'm openly gay and that I'm addressing women, which I was in my poetry, but and um, at the same time, I was afraid that I would be published, didn't want to be published just because I was gay. Um, actually, I was turned turn down by a lesbian publisher <laughs> uh, because they didn't think I was um, enough gay. Um, so, um, and my so my first book was published by a big mainstream publisher. Um, but now things are a bit different. Um, but I think a debate about niche, we will maybe come to that later. Um, well, the fact is that uh, there we are three, let's say very acknowledged or enough acknowledged um, women or writers, poets who are lesbians, openly lesbian, but very much different. So that tells something, uh, but we will probably get another question to talk more about things. Sorry, just a, a quick point. We <laughs> we've just put two more microphones on the table and you can just hand them around so you ha don't have to use the table microphone. Uh, so, uh, it's similar in Ukraine, uh, you should be queer to be a queer writer, and it was uh, a wrong point to me. And I said, okay, uh, queer is uh, a simple uh, a, a topic about uh, you uh, write, and uh, I wanted to um, make it a normal topic in an absolutely normal book, and it was an experience. Um, and. Um, Everybody asked me, why are you writing about queer? You are not uh, uh, queer yourself. And it was uh, very strange for me because why can I not? <laughs> and um, I think, um, yeah, we, we don't have a queer writing as uh, something normal. We have a community and everybody who try to, to speak about this or to write about this uh, should be prepared to defend himself. Uh, and to be, uh, to be in opposite to the rest of society because uh, yeah, we have a very conservative society and um, it is not, uh, not uh, open to, uh, to, uh, to queer. And uh, so uh, I, I tried to make a normal text, I made it and I hope it will be uh, normal in the future and nobody will ask a writer why I am writing about this. That. <coughs> Being a queer writer helped me in a way to make me know because uh, when I f published my first novel, I ran alone on this niche, so it was okay for me. I want to add something. Uh, uh, I don't want to fall into the pit of false friends, so to speak, um, and uh, repeat the whole thing about queer in a manner that I, I do not relate to. Uh, the way I understand queer is the way that it was described yesterday. By the Turkish author who 
uh, described the queer, uh, the, his outcoming and his, uh, yeah, his uh, literary struggling yesterday. You, uh, you said that you are uh, one of uh, three uh, women who are writing. <coughs> yes, okay. And I want to ask uh, you or you all how important is uh, international networking for you with other writers all over the world or in Europe or How important is uh, international networking? Was that a question? Yes. Um, I mean, it's. I think it's important to get to know writers from all over the world to share our writing and to also share and to learn about the different circumstance in general and just, um, but for a start, it's just good to meet interesting people. Um, but I am um, really not thinking, uh, when you ask about networking, yeah, I, I, I think about the terms of sharing and connecting, but not so much uh, uh, in the, um, from the, let's say, I don't know, marketing point of view or like, you know. I had a very interesting experience yesterday. When we authors met uh, at the lobby of the hotel, I saw a very familiar face, and I wasn't sure where I know that face from. Then I recognized that this face was from a Romanian film I saw um, uh, some some months ago. And this film left a trace uh, in me and uh, and it was a film written and directed by one of the participants today. A film that asked questions about um, the helpless um, um, vulnerability. Questions of the lack of ability to help people. And a film that made, made me struggle because it uh, poised me um, directly in front of my own prejudices. And so in that sense, I think it's very important to to encounter other people and other texts and read their texts or films in that case uh, in order to to exchange and to exchange ideas and to find something new. Uh, and when I was talking about the helpless vulnerability and, and helplessness, Yeah, it was related to that film. Uh, it was about gypsies in Romania. So that was written by Adrian, or did I get that right? Yes. Oh. yes. Yeah, yes. okay. Um, perhaps we could nevertheless stay with the label queer just, just for a minute before moving on, although um, I think we, we all get the impression that uh, you all feel you go beyond the, 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 the mere uh, label queer. Um, reading your statements, I felt there was an interesting, almost paradoxical position. Um, um, Natalka in her statement said that she wants to normalize uh, queer relationships in her literature, and, and Christina talked about the dangers of difference disappearing, which I suppose is also about normalizing, and yet a, a couple of you in your statements also talked about the enormous backlash that you get in your countries in, in reviews from the church and so on. And 
regarding sort of very, very basic and not even very progressive matters. Could you perhaps talk about that for a bit, if you'd like? <laughs> Do you think you're in a, in a paradoxical position? I would like to say some, uh, something. Um, I think uh, the most important thing is to, to try to understand context. Uh, and uh, if uh, I s say, if I, if I talk about uh, Serbian or post Yugoslavian context, uh, you must understand the uh, level uh, of uh, different phobias in society. And in that sense, uh, uh, if you have a queer label as the most important, a lot of things uh, will be closed for you. Mm -hmm. Media, some programs, uh, you, you, you will be put in one folder, you are queer author, uh, this is ghetto position, uh, and that's it. I think uh, it can be uh, some other try how to struggle, uh, feminist struggle, so uh, let's try to be part of mainstream, to be queer, but not only the queer. Uh, so in that sense, uh, I said, I have no problem to, to say that I am queer author, but I'm not only the queer author. This is not, uh, in that sense, the most important thing, uh, because I think it's more, sm it's smarter to, to be, how to explain, in more folders and to try to, to do something with that, uh, from that position, not only. But uh, this is only because of uh, the context. I, I think, uh, yeah, this is the most important, so I will repeat. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have uh, absolutely different situation with uh, this topic because if uh, you are saying or writing something about queer, uh, you are not uh, uh, close from, from TV or from uh, me media uh, and publisher. Uh, everybody wants to have it as a topic because it will bring um, some protests. Yeah? If you have a presentation uh, from a book about queer, you uh, you have uh, some radical people who uh, are sending uh, dangerous letters to you because they are against it and every publisher wants this scandal is clear and it was uh, a point for me because i wanted not uh, talk about it in this field of scandal in this field of uh, of uh, danger um, but i wanted to talk about it as uh, about rights, about people, about feelings, about everything has uh, what literature has to do, not about the political scandals in, in this field. But uh, those we have uh, enough, I think. And um, we have um, also a, a little bit different situation because a queer community uh, is not separated in our country as, as only queer. We have this... Um, common thing, everybody who is not normal. And uh, there are feminists, there are invalids, there are immigrants, uh, everybody who is not normal. Huh? And if you start uh, to, uh, to uh, tell or to write about it as a normality, uh, you are not normal uh, twice, because uh, it is uh, so, uh, so is the situation. Um, I think I'm the only, I mean, I think my country, Russia, is the only country among um, Eastern European countries that uh, recently took a completely different path rather than ex-Yugoslavian countries or Ukraine, because in all those countries uh, we see that LGBT rights uh, are promoted. Uh, maybe not so fast as we would like to, but still, I mean, in Serbia you have gay pride since a number of years, in Ukraine the same situation, in Kiev. No? Well, this year you have... Well, still, but you still have it, right? In Russia, it's forbidden. You, you can't even organize anything. Oh, okay. So, uh, and um, this is why in Russia it's very difficult to publish anything queer, uh, because publishing houses they just uh, afraid not to. Uh, they're afraid of scandals, actually. Yes. First of all, they think that they won't gain enough money with this literature. Uh, second of all, they don't want to have any problems with it, uh, with the authorities. Because, uh, prob because in Russia, uh, we don't have homophobes against uh, LGBTQ community, but we have the state, which is against LGBTQ community. And this is much more um, harder 
uh, to uh, uh, fight with the, with the state rather than with the people, right? So today we are again, we've been there already in 1990s, but today we're again obliged to explain to the people that to be gay or lesbian or whatever is totally normal and is, it's not a sin or um, disease or whatever. Um, and this is why I think I, I look with the hope, with a big hope for the rest of the world, at least part in, in, in Europe, I mean. But Russia, I don't know um, what, um, how it's going to be developed because um, uh, nowadays it's a bit complicated, yeah. If you're a queer, whatever, writer or artist, um, uh, if you want to be successful, uh, you better hide your identity. Uh, if you want to play on this ground, then um, you'd face that, um, you'd be, you, you wouldn't be even in a ghetto, you would be just forbidden from any public um, uh, speaking. I want to only shortly uh, comment this uh, topic with pride uh, in Ukraine. Uh, we are trying to, to make pride and something like that uh, was uh, twice happened in Kiev, in, in, in the capital, but it was very, um, uh, very sad. Many people was damaged. It was uh, not, uh, not going to the end. And the same was in Lviv. Uh, they wanted not made, make a pride. They wanted only uh, see f document, uh, uh, document films on some hotel, and uh, they were um, attacked from from uh, radical people. It was uh, uh, it was last year. And this year, um, uh, this, uh, the community said, "Okay, uh, we'll, we will not uh, make it uh, to uh, to bring us in, in danger. Let us meet in uh, m make it in internet." And it was online, and everybody could join uh, to uh, to it on on YouTube. Um, I was. Uh, it, it was called um, a Festival of uh, Equality, and <coughs> it was not only LGBT communities. It was also immigrants from East, uh, displaced people, uh, uh, invalids, and so on and so on. And everybody told about uh, this human rights, about uh, experiences, <coughs> mostly bad experiences, and uh, every part of Ukraine joined to, to this conference and talk about it. Um, I was uh, uh, online to see uh, how many people uh, will see this uh, on the internet. It was 50 people. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so far. And I think Serbs had the same experience. I think the first gay pride in the Ukraine was by the first gay pride in the Ah, sorry, yeah, I was speaking that in Serbia, I think in Belgrade, I think it was 2009 or 10, I don't know, when was I'm the first time? Sure. Yeah. It there were clashes with the radicals, not with the police, though. They, I think there were more policemen, Serb Serbian policemen, uh, than the LGBT people in the streets, and then they were beaten up by... Yeah, it was, I think, 2001, but the okay, similar was in Split also, yeah. I think it's the same pattern. Uh, perhaps the rest of, of you who haven't haven't uh, spoken to this topic yet could briefly come in uh, regarding how, how you feel where things are going uh, in terms of the optimism or pessimism because of uh, Sergei's theory that sort of Russia stands apart in that sense. Would you agree with that? Perhaps uh, uh, Leila or Adrian in your countries. Uh, also, I need to say that in Bosnia we don't have pride yet. <laughs> it's the same thing. Um, Actually, there was also one clash a few years ago, but it, we didn't, it wasn't the pride, it was just a queer fest, and the people were attacked. So, but when I'm speaking about writing, uh, the thing is that I cannot separate Bosnia from the Serbia, Croatia, or Montenegro, because we are the one language, the one cultural space. So, uh, as a queer writer, I, I don't have any problem with that label that, uh, for me, but, I also have my space. I have some publishers that are ready to publish my work. I published my book in Zagreb, in Belgrade, also in Sarajevo. Mm -hmm. But um, when we are speaking about being gay or being queer, in Bosnia uh, we, we share all the problems, but for the literature I think that things are in a process of changing. Mm -hmm. So uh, among the, I, I can also say, <laughs> not including myself, but among the most prominent writers in our region today, many of them are 
free writers. <laughs> so I think that that's something that is changing now. <coughs> your, your question is about society or about, I don't know, writers, arts? Both, <laughs> essentially. Or writers, if you like. No, it's okay. It's okay because, uh, I don't know, as a queer artist, you can attract money to make your project because of European Union and stuff like this. You feel, in a way, protected. Uh, a society is more complicated. You want, so you wa you want me to detailed or if you like to. So, uh, it's okay because Romania is now part of European Union, so lots of pressure come to us, to Romania, to adapt, adopt this political stuff about this. Uh, otherwise, there's a counter-reaction uh, came from come uh, who that come from uh, uh, church and conservative classes of societies uh, who start to organize now and uh, make a counter reaction against gays. I mean, not gays uh, won't allowed to marry and stuff. Uh, so, uh, in the past, Orthodox Church was uh, accused not being so social, socially in implicated, you know, not being political and activistic. Now, I think because of, uh, because of um, neo-protestantism, you know, neo-protestant churches, American neo-protestant churches are well organized and has, has this activistic and being, making communities role. So the uh, Orthodox Church start to adapt this model. And that come against gays, unfortunately. Uh, so, but in a way, that's good for, for, for gay, paradoxically speaking, it's good for gay communities because make, make, make community more visible. Uh, in Romania, has a problem with visibility and provoke gay being public and, uh, and, and being political. And gay in Roma gays in Romania has this problem, being discreet, not being in public. So I think paradoxically, is good in a way. Okay, so in the Slovenia situation is a bit different comparing to the countries, other countries here. As we heard, um, well, the first parade was in 2001. Uh, it wasn't called Pride Parade yet, but that was the beginning, uh, just as a actually reaction to famous Slovenian gay writer and uh, his French, I guess, being turned down to enter a, a bar because they were obviously gay. Uh, so that was in 2001 that that started the history of parade in Slovenia. But uh, you were your question in the beginning was about being a lesbian old or a gay old queer author. Um, I guess now we are at the point, I, maybe, I, mean, I would dare to say that we are now uh, writers or queer writers where we, or some of us who want to be, that at the same time there would be, we would be recognized as being gay or raising the questions of being gay or a position of being gay in the society and tackling the questions that have to do with being queer, but at the same time uh, literary critics would read us, uh, would read also other things or f also read it from the wider perspective. So, uh, but then again, there are also differences between us. Uh, some, some, some people um, 
like to be labeled uh, specifically, uh, that would refer mostly to the older generations, but some of the youngest, younger too, so. As far as I can see, I, I'm, I, in my country, Bulgaria, I belong to a group which is a privileged group. Um, uh, writers uh, having a gay background are accepted, are widely accepted. But as it comes to uh, living a gay life, it's a completely different picture because uh, there is huge, there are huge differences between the city and um, the smaller cities, and uh, which is also a difference in acceptance. Uh, in Sofia, there are uh, several places of organized life, gay life, um, um, culture, literature, music. So um, on the other, overall, there is a huge problem with uh, um, using the terminology because people do, don't understand uh, terms like gender, queer. Um, nobody had explained them in a in a proper way, and the the latest example is uh, the Istanbul Convention, which was ratified in Germany and other countries. But um, the the highest court in Bulgaria um, ruled last week that it's um, anti-constitutional. That's against the Bulgarian constitution because um, actually it's a convention um, protecting women from uh, from household um, force and uh, also protecting um, gay and queer people. Um, and the problem in this, con in, in this um, convention was the word gender. Nobody understood what gender means and nobody explained them what gender means. So uh, people are like accusing each other of being a gender. Uh, they think that it's some kind of a third sex. Uh, um, you're some kind of an alien. Um, and, and they understood this um, rat ratification of the convention as accepting um, the strange morals of the West and accepting um, the marriages between gay and lesbians and uh, they rejected it and the highest court rejected it as well. Five women. <laughs> Another question, are your, trans uh, your books or texts translated into other languages and which? Okay, my, my previous book, my fifth book, which was uh, awarded, was just last year uh, translated into, into German. But otherwise I have translations of poems into 15 languages but not the whole books, so, yeah. Uh, I have written um, about 10 books and uh, they were translated into different languages. Uh, the queer topic I have in two books, uh, the previous one, it is about um, two Ukrainian uh, women uh, who are coming to Germany uh, to earn money with some uh, uh, jobs and they are queer and it was translated into uh, German and my translator is here. <laughs> As, uh, it was published in Austria and uh, the last one um, is it appeared in um, last year 
and now it is translated into German too. It's not exactly to clear uh, topic, but about um, one um, historical po political po politic uh, politic who who was queer, and mm -hmm. it is queer in his in history uh, book. Well, now my books are not translated in, uh, on anything. I just have two extracts from my first book published on OpenDemocracy.net. Uh, in English, but it's just small. One of them uh, we will be reading uh, later tonight, otherwise no. So if anybody wants, I'm... Um, some of my poems have been translated into English and German and uh, three um, short um, excerpts from my book uh, letters to Peter uh, were translated into German for the Leipzig uh, Book Fair this year. I have some so short stories who was translated in German and was published in German, in Switzerland, in uh, Belgium. And my last novel will be will appear will be published in Poland in this autumn. Uh, some of my short stories, not some of, uh, my short stories are translated into Italian uh, and uh, also some of uh, text are translated into uh, Swedish, Hungarian uh, and now in German for, for today night. But I, I, I wanted to add something to the previous question, if I can now. It's, it's a chaos, because, but I must uh, talk like this. Uh, about the process, process and uh, some, some kind of transition in society, uh, uh, according to the question of queer in, in uh, open space, uh, I would like to say something about uh, the, uh, for example, uh, creative writing workshops. Uh, I have uh, more than five years uh, experience uh, in that. Uh, I work with uh, mostly with young people uh, and uh, I understood uh, uh, that this is actually a greater opportunity uh, to do something with the queer, but not uh, like this, uh, okay, please come to write uh, or to read about queer, not like this. Then uh, we will uh, read, write, analyze, the, we will have discussion. Uh, you will uh, publish something maybe. Uh, but actually in that process, uh, I think that's this is the normal thing that uh, people are like this. Uh, they're in some phases like, okay, now we uh, will read about uh, relations between people uh, and we will have question uh, uh, why somebody can do everything uh, what he or she wants, and somebody else cannot. And this is the question when people start to think about this and normally come to the question of queer also, but not only the queer, the question of poverty, uh, war, post-war queer, uh, and stuff like this. And I think that uh, this is a great opportunity and this is some, something like long-term process or project or I don't know how to say uh, and actually this is the space to, to uh, work on uh, empowering of queer culture uh, on that way and this is also space uh, where uh, queer authors can come to work with young people to read uh, to have discussion to share experiences uh, to, to give some recommendation uh, and I think this we, we can maybe we can do more in this field uh, to try to, to do with young people, not only young but young. Yeah. And yeah, about translations, I said I think yeah. Uh, for me, my book of short stories is already translated into Macedonian and Slovenian, and now it's in the process of translation in Polish and English, but separately. Uh, sto some stories from the book are uh, also translated in other languages, uh, German also, so mm. that's for now. Uh, 
I would I would like to add something to the last question as well. Especially for Bulgaria, I can say that, um, well, 10, 20 years ago, the uh, people who are relating to, to this topic were uh, much more working as activists um, in order to um, give, give some space uh, for gay people. Now they're more concentrated on um, um, organizing structures and uh, um, integrating the whole thing. So uh, there is not so much activism as in the early days of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, of this gay community. Uh, uh, perhaps in, in terms of your p publishing both at home and abroad, could you talk about the, your outlets? Because we, we noticed a huge diversity in your statements about how publishers react to your work and where you publish your work, both at home and abroad, as it were. Um, perhaps we, we could start with, with Adrian, who, who mentioned that... Uh, so you wrote in your statement that you are published by the biggest Romanian publisher. Um, is that once more evidence of how you, you benefit from the niche, or is that more an exception to the rule in your view? I think I benefit from the niche because was not was not gay was not gay literature in Romania in that time. So Romania prepared to get to European Union. They need they need like a gay writer. So. <laughs> 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 okay, maybe how about the rest of you? Does it, does it work in a similar way? Or do, do you even rely on traditional publishers for the most part? Or do you also publish online? Or what are your channels? Well, I already said at the beginning that my first book was turned out by lesbian uh, publisher. <laughs> not being gay enough or me not being known in the community enough or being just, I don't know, young lesbian not being known <laughs> enough in the community and not being, not come, not, not having any activist background because um, three prominent, other three that I mentioned before or some of them are the same writers uh, have a strong uh, activist background. But when I came with the first books uh, book, um, I think, yeah, the, the lesbian publisher was the first one that I offered it and turn, they turned it down. And then, then I went to the mainstream. Um, and I was afraid that maybe if, what if I'm published just because this could be a niche. Uh, but I, I would like to believe uh, that I wasn't published because of that. Um, so my first two books were published by a big mainstream publisher. And then the third one was... Uh, with the gay publisher, not a lesbian. Um, so, uh, oh, your question was also about the the broad. No, the German translation it was actually mm, the publisher is Slovenian uh, publisher. It's not German, so I uh, don't have experience in that. But when it comes to uh, literary magazines, they're just different. I mean, they're actually no, no, none of them are queer, and they're just. I mean, fifteen or at least 10 different countries, but 15 languages. So I can't really know about that part. In Bulgaria, there are two uh, publishers um, publishing Bulgarian literature, two big mainstream publishers. Um, my last two books were published in the one, in the one, and then in the other at the other uh, publishing house. So uh, um, they are both mainstream publications. Uh, 
but there are also some uh, new small struggling um, uh, publishing houses um, who apply for money every year um, and wait for uh, funding. Um, they also publish um, different various um, gay and lesbian authors and everybody. And what amazed me uh, during the um, um, Leipzig book fair was um, how um, patient uh, the German audiences are. Um, uh, because while I was speaking in Bulgarian and my um, uh, my texts were uh, read in Bulgarian, then in uh, German, everybody was listening and laughing and um, I, um, I was, I adored this reaction. So as I, as I said, I don't have any experience with uh, foreign publishers. But in Russia, well, my first book, uh, they written in 2012, I think, I don't remember now. I was trying to sell it to Russian publishing houses. I was sending the texts and synopsis, etc. And I was living in Paris at the time. And the people, if they were replying, they were saying that text is fine, but it doesn't correspond to our policy, etc. So nobody was really interested. So then I abandoned the idea of publishing the book because I had other stuff to do. And when I came back to Moscow, uh, it was finally published with um, uh, the, uh, with a publishing house, with a small publishing house called Colonna Publications, uh, that doesn't earn any money, and they only publishes they, they publish mostly translations of uh, um, foreign queer writers mostly Western, Americans, uh, English, French, uh, beginning of the last century and uh, mid the 20th century, etc. that nobody reads. But they sort of <laughs> like to promote this kind of literature in, in Russia. So they did publish my book, although I did pay for the printing uh, because the publishing house obviously don't have any money. The book was kind of successful, so I got back all the money. They also, uh, they also managed the distribution of the book, so I didn't uh, I need to speak to the stores, etc. Uh, then the, the second book, when I read in the second book, one of the big publishing houses in Moscow, uh, IST, uh, they were interested in publishing it. They have a department uh, that doesn't make business. They make the business with the police stories and uh, all these pocket uh, sort of love uh, novels. And they have a department that publishes uh, political books and memoirs, etc. And they, they don't have anything queer, but they were interested in my second novel. So for a year, <laughs> they were preparing layout, they were preparing the book, they were like uh, preparing the agreement with me, etc. Lots of uh, emails back and forward. And then when the year passed, nothing happens. And I said, what's going on? And they said, listen, we need another month and then another month. And then I sort of got tired and I published the second book with the same publishing house as the first one. And again, I did pay for the printing. And again, I got back my money because the book was sold out. So. Um, the summary of all this is that it is very complicated for a queer writer in Russia to publish anything uh, in a big publishing house because they are, whether, as I said before, they whether would understand that they wouldn't gain anything with that or they're afraid of scandals. Because my second book was sort of a lot of sex and religious issues and I think they kind of, they got interested but then they said, well, we don't want really to have any scandal with us. So as I said uh, before, uh, I, um, uh, it was not my m main idea to uh, to write about queer. It was only one uh, topic in, in this book, and why uh, my mm, uh, this, these two women are uh, queer, I, uh, I, I, I didn't uh, I, uh, had the idea to to use this niche or to to make something different. It was um, a feeling for me because they, uh, they are immigrants, they are living in the foreign country, and uh, we have a lot of, of such people. Uh, they are um, teachers of music uh, who can, uh, cannot earn the money at, at live, and uh, they go abroad to, uh, to do something for a living. And uh, they are overqualified for this job, and they, um, they, are very mar they are feeling very very lonely in, in, in Germany where they work and they're feeling uh, only uh, very lonely uh, at home too because they are um, queer and it, is, it was for me an, 
um, very good uh, art to uh, to specify this feeling to loneliness, uh, how how somebody feels who who is uh, a, f a friend for, for uh, at home and friend uh, friend abroad who are, uh, who are living in such um, a situation, and um, it was published um, by quite big uh, publisher house, but it was not um, connect with this with the topic because I'm usually publishing by. Um, as a bigger publisher house in, in Ukraine. Um, I uh, had a feeling that the publisher house in Ukraine wanted to uh, make it a little more uh, scandal in it. Uh, they wanted uh, to specify this, the topic, but I was against it. And um, it was uh, this uh, idea for me, uh, of me uh, to make it normal, to make it express feelings of these women, not uh, to use this um, uh, 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 this uh, topic. And uh, so was the reaction from, from public, uh, uh, also in, in the community. Um, they, um, they were sc skeptical because they wanted uh, to use it as, a, as some... Um, um, yeah, the not many books uh, from not queer writers who who are, uh, who are writing about the topic, and uh, we tried to to make some uh, some discussion about uh, this topic, and it was uh, okay. But um, uh, people wanted more more scandal in it. Uh, they are used to to to, to have it scandal. I personally find it quite funny that Russian publishers, they're afraid of scandals, and Ukrainian publishers actually demand the author to, make, so to add the scandal into the book. I want to be, I, maybe I should uh, publish my books in Ukraine now. Uh, for me, I just need to write something. Uh, it was the question about uh, international relations and everything. And I need to say that in the last two years I'm more abroad than in my own country. But my experience is um, when I have uh, uh, some readings inside the Yugoslavian countries, they are more interesting in my queer writings because it's in our regions still something fresh and new. But when I go outside, they, they want me to talk about war. Because I'm from Bosnia, <laughs> and it's exactly. still, and it's still, uh, uh, you, know, you know, you are a Bosnian writer, and somehow they expect you to talk about war. So, my two main topics are queer and war. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read an interview with you in a in a Swiss online journal, and they introduced it from war-torn Sarajevo to peaceful Zug in Switzerland, yeah. just like that, yeah. Uh, it w uh, I'm not that young anymore, but in my childhood, uh, we had those stories about Second World War, and in my kindergarten, I had a, a, we had a teacher, and she was retired, but they invite you every year to come to talk uh, talk to us about the war. And now when people from Sarajevo ask me what, uh, what is like you, for you to go outside and speak, I, I told them that I'm also feeling like her. <laughs> they invite me to explain people what the war is. So it was in Tug also. <laughs> Um, yeah, p perhaps we could m move on to, to reception, the, the third big topic of our panel, and um, you've already mentioned some of it. Um, I, from what you said so far, I get the impression that both scandal and the sort of the queer label or the queer niche can make for a lot of success or at least public attention, and yet also almost all of you in your statements have written about a negative backlash as well. Um, could you perhaps talk about that and how, how you deal with both both the backlash and your success, or perhaps the paradoxical situation that, for instance, Sergei's books sell out, and yet he's barely allowed to, to publish them? Uh, I have no experience with scandal yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, for me, it was interesting because uh, in my first two books, short stories and uh, poetry, uh, 
there, there is no so explicit queer elements. Uh, and I think that uh, no, ne never somebody asked me something about queer before my novel, before last year. Uh, uh, and for me, it is also interesting that uh, people understand my novel uh, as a book uh, about uh, old people, old ladies, in my language, Baba or Babama, uh, but in the same uh, time uh, about queer. And this is very, <laughs> for me it was interesting, uh, how, how people can understand that story. Uh, and uh, queer in, the, in that uh, context of that novel, I think it's not uh, on, a, on a way to be a scandal. Because, uh, the, you know, this is the story about the family, about the fall of family, about, of course, war and poverty, our life. Uh, and in that context, queer is okay. You have also queer, yes. Old people, poverty, war, death, sex, and queer. C'est la vie. I don't think I belong to the commercial authors in Bulgaria. Um, so to speak, uh, well, uh, I'm someone who is um, moving uh, within the sphere of uh, high uh, city literature. Um, and in this sphere, um, I, I um, was acclaimed the, um, well, the importance and the audience that usually a normal novel in Bulgaria gets, <laughs> um, a normal a novel which is uh, published in a mainstream uh, publishing house. Um, and the literary critics uh, reacted um, not by mentioning explicitly that it is about the relation between men and um, another man. It was uh, quite clear that it's about such type of... Um, um, they were concentrating on uh, yeah, what this book is about and uh, what is in the book. So the queer literature in Bulgaria, as far as I can see, is integrated into the other types of literature and there is no um, explicit difference um, and no scandal in the sense that uh, it was described uh, before in other countries. I wanted to add uh, some topic. We, um, uh, we have a literature that is quite uh, conservative, but we are developing very uh, quickly. And uh, I try to be positive thinking about how things will be developing with queer literature, uh, because now we have this uh, per period of scandal, but soon uh, I, uh, I think it will be quite normal to write about it. Uh, I can remember. Uh, my first book, um, it's also available here in, in German translation. Uh, it was published the first time for um, 20 years, uh, 15 years, and uh, it was a huge scandal because uh, everybody wrote uh, that uh, a woman uh, should not uh, write in this way about these things. <laughs> Nobody told what, what things and uh, which way. So uh, it was not allowed to, um, uh, to use uh, some uh, bad, uh, bad, bad words in, in the literature if you have to be a writer, not uh, somebody. And women uh, sh have to, had to, to write only for other women, not normal yeah. literature. And uh, now this book is in, in, um, uh, in school programs, so it is absolutely... Uh, normal to, for, for children to read it and nobody uh, makes a scandal um, uh, of it and 
I think uh, it is uh, uh, almost a, time, uh, a question of time, how, how, long, it, how long it takes uh, to, uh, for, for the conservative literature to, um, to get used to some topics, to some uh, uh, new, uh, new things that are coming. Um, sorry, my English is a disaster, so <laughs> Lavdina will will help me to answer. I have always tried to make scandal from every possible position. <laughs> I, I don't have any problem with that. I tried to make a scandal with my first book, but people didn't believe me. They said, this guy is not uh, gay. gay. He's only <laughs> pretending. <laughs> with my latest novel also, I tried to make a scandal to attack both left and right, the conservatives and all that. And the critic said, no, this is a book about human um, uh, humanity. humanity. <laughs> <laughs> um, I managed to make a scandal with an article that had nothing to do with gay issues. It was uh, published in a journal. And it was about Manele, that's the gypsy music, uh, pop music. Because in Romania this um, uh, sparked a sort of uh, moral panic wave, this kind of music, all the intellectuals panicked about it and about its popularity, increasing popularity. So this is what I try to analyze in my article, uh, all the aspects of this moral panic um, about this kind of music. <laughs> he also has a PhD on this. And uh, my book was adapted uh, for film, and when the film came out, it was projected at a cinema that's uh, in the Museum of the Romanian Peasant, which is a very conservative uh, cinema. And it was a huge scandal with a protest that was sustained by a thing that is called the Coalition for Family that we have in, in Romania. It's an... That's a religious organization that is supported by the church and that is against gay marriage in Romania. And they interrupted the film and there was a protest in, in front of the cinema house with um, people shouting and... And I wasn't bothered at all by this because it was publicity. <laughs> I was reminded of this when you were talking about some people not understanding the definition of the word gender, but I'm curious in your work, um, I come from the States and I, I'm aware of a lot of uh, new language to talk about um, different queer identities and sexual identities in general. And I'm curious if that is something that you study or are aware of to bring into your work these these new languages with that or new um, new definitions does that make sense Well, 
Well, for example, there's some things becoming popular uh, with young people talking about being pansexual or polysexual or uh, just new, new ways to describe even more niche from queer. And I'm wondering if you, you know, if in the different countries that you live in, if that is something that is, is becoming known or, and if it plays into your work, if you write about, you know, if you're learning these new terms and bringing them into your work or does that make sense? I think, in Romania because uh, in my opinion Romanian language is a homophobic language actually it didn't integrate any new, new languages we don't even translate queer and we don't have a language to speak about the transgender reality we cannot trans, uh, translate transgender and we use the word for transsexual which is somehow not the same thing and it's offensive and all the queer I cannot say a queer language. All the language that it uses around the LGBTQI reality is imported from English and language and it's used in a very small community and not by writers because for a Schiop novel is not what an American will think a queer, uh, to be a queer novel is rather a gay, a gay literature. We didn't step forward and to make a dif uh, difference between gay culture, queer culture, because we don't have a language. My impression is that in, um, in the US, um, the, the, the term queer has a very natural origin and is used in a very natural way and uh, has been integrated into the, the formal use in society since ages. Um, um, this is also when I think of uh, the novel by William Burroughs, queer. Uh, I don't know if, if this term is uh, directly coming from there, but yeah, it's something um, that is accepted, that is normal, that is uh, part of the society, and it's different in Bulgaria, where queer uh, is to signify things that are strange, different, um, that have something to do with strange sex. And uh, um, it's an imported term that has not really found its way into um, the the normal citizen um, and, and nobody really is aware of what it signifies, what it means, how to use it. Um, and I have the, exp the, the feeling that uh, this uh, term is being uh, used, especially in academic and um, uh, gay circles. And um, apart from them, um, it has absolutely no significance and importance. Să înțeleg la ce te referi, la toată realitatea asta cu granițe fluide în ce privește genul și relațiile, presupun. Um, I suppose you mean all this rela uh, relationship between um, uh, 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 fluid borders between gender and that was what you meant. And relationship, um, ok. No, I'm, I'm, no. În fel, le resimt artificiale în limba română. 
feel they are all these words are artificial in Romanian. Și le folosesc mai mult, dacă chiar le încerc să le evit și în măsura în care le folosesc, le folosesc cu ghilimele, ironic. Nu sună altfel, sună ciudat. I try to avoid them as much as possible and if I use them I always put the inverted commas um, and use them ironically. But um, if I may also have um, an answer to what she said um, about the Romanian language being prepared to um, accommodate all these English words because I, I work as a translator and I have to translate all sorts of stuff about wind turbines and about solar panels and about all this you know technology that comes from abroad and the Romanian language and I suppose lots of other languages are not so keen to receive uh, you know to to find equivalence for for these words. So I think it takes time and there are a lot of things that we feel as artificial in the language but may find their place in time in our language. So I don't, I'm not sure uh, this is a discussion only about um, queer related topics or it's just about, you know, languages and how uh, flexible they are and how ready to um, adopt new words. So I'm not sure I agree with, with what was said before. Um, we have another question from, from the audience, but, uh, oh, sorry, would yes. you like to come in? Um, we have this discussion about language in Ukraine, but not uh, exactly in the literature, in, 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 uh, in uh, texts, but um, in journalism and uh, in, in, in the society, and it is, um, it, it started with war, yeah, because uh, language is something uh, that you have to be careful uh, if the situation is dangerous. And uh, we started to talk about, uh, as the war started, and uh, we talked about how to write about uh, things, uh, not hurting uh, other people's feelings. And then uh, from this uh, war topic, it, uh, um, it was uh, continued with other uh, tolerance uh, topics and uh, gender, queer, and, and so on and so far uh, is in common. But uh, we also are not on the on the uh, stage now uh, to to uh, to use other words. We, uh, we use this English uh, uh, words, and I think it is also a matter of time. Uh, language uh, has to be used to these words, to this, um, uh, what they mean. And uh, now you should really uh, um, uh, tell people about what is mean, what is the difference be between gay and queer. And it's uh, really not, not in a common sense. Okay, I understood your question also uh, in related to our writing. How do we... So I am like the most focused on the use of language, not just uh, to, to express my uh, thoughts, but just how to use language to go beyond to the use of these words. Actually, I'm avoid, uh, trying to avoid the use of terms lesbian, gay, although I used it like three times in six books. <laughs> um, but, um, the in and uh, you were mentioning uh, pansexual and I don't know all these uh, words that for my generation, if yes, if you're not studying theory or if you're not being really uh, like an activist in that field, uh, I have to admit that it's these are the terms that you have to learn, uh, like what me it means to be cis uh, sexual, um, what, what the term is. Um, but something interesting has been going on recently in Slovenian uh, at a faculty on the faculty level because uh, at the Faculty of Arts, uh, they adopted the idea of using um, underline in language because Slovenian uh, language has, uh, the gender is recognized in, in the form of verb. So the verb has, you know, different, um, not prefix, but the other one at the end, <laughs> suffix, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can recognize the gender and um, so, the, this faculty, the Faculty of Arts, um, adopted to use uh, underline uh, just to, to divide, so not to make it, it can use, no? No, no, that's a start, it is adopted, but no, no, I'm getting to, uh, there. <laughs> uh, but now, most recent um, 
thing that was uh, that Anya thought that I was missing is um, that for the next three years in the but that you will prop I would ask you to help me what it was but they are trying to not trying they just decided confirmed that for the next three years we would use uh, female instead of male because male it was until now it was treated as a norm of course. Uh, but now the dean and the group of people said, no, we are having three, three years of uh, female uh, in, in faculty regulation and some of the official uh, papers there. And of course, that was, I think that was the biggest scandal that had to do with queer in Slovenia. So it's still, I think it's still going on topic. So, uh, well, together with an artist, in 2011 I was studying the Romanian language from the perspective of representation of gay community, and we found only five words in the Romanian language. Homophobia, homophobia is not explained. Homosexual is explained as... Uh, a sort of disease that leads to a relationship between males. Lesbianism is not explained. Is um, the word is related to a living person into the Lesbos island, and quite that's it. And now I have a question for you. What do you think about Romanian language? Because me, as a queer person, I cannot express my identity. It's not about translate, translating constructions. I cannot talk to my mother. First of all, it depends what text you studied. I mean, what was the corpus that you studied? Yes, I was just saying that it takes time to integrate foreign words, and if the words are foreign, they're obviously not in the dictionary yet, so. <laughs> Yes, we have this problem with Romanian dictionaries. Yes, we have very stupid and old dictionaries and we don't have a department in the Romanian Academy that should uh, do every year an update of the dictionary. That's, I agree with that, but I wasn't saying that. Um, if you really want to make a research, then you don't research the dictionary. You should research how the community speaks, how the people speak. Well, then it was an artistic project with a dictionary. I Uh, Again, relating to your question, uh, when uh, when you're talking, when we're talking about this, these terms, I think that the terms are have are being created and they are there to describe the writing for those who want to describe the way someone writes, but they are not integrated or not a part of my writing. When I write, I, uh, I'm more interested in, in nuances and atmospheres and rhythm and not in uh, using specific terms Discuția complicată asta, în ce măsură, în ce măsură inexistența cuvintelor ăsta la englezești uh, nu, 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 lasă, nu lasă loc uh, gayilor să se exprime. Ai, pentru că există și, există și un slang gay care e vechi de sute de ani, de când, mă rog, sau, deci asta e contraargumentul. Uh, it's a complicated discussion, this one about um, how the um, um, expression of um, gay identity is affected by the fact that uh, there, are there aren't uh, such words in the dictionary. But apart from that, there's also a gay slang that is pretty old, it's 100 years old, so... So, I, I, I don't agree with this Lacanian, I don't know, <laughs> you know, approach. Is, is this gay slang with sister, with, I don't know, with 
as, as sabotating, cum zicea, sabota identitatea. Sabotating the identity. <coughs> so. Există, există o literatură queer în care gay s-au exprimat, există o comunitate care, mă rog, așa, așa opresată cum a fost, și avea un limbaj și avea, și a construit un limbaj, și a construit un, un, un slang, un argou. Uh, he says that there is a literature, a gay literature, and that a, a gay slang was developed over time. So uh, this uh, discussion with the dictionary is a bit more complicated than... Ca să luăm așa chestia asta cu non-binary. Uh, în trecut nu exista un gender neutral, chestia asta de, gender, de neutralitate de gen. Însă exista chestia asta de sabotare a identității. So if we speak about non-binary, for example, in the past there was, uh, we weren't using this term, but it was this thing about sabotaging your own identity. Și sabotarea identității hetero and the sabotaging of the hetero identity. So these things existed. And this language existed even if it's not reflected in the dictionary. Uh, I just want to add something because uh, when we come to the language, it's always a rough question because language is always political. Uh, we also have this fight still, uh, Boyan and me, to prove that we speak one language. But when we are talking about uh, the specific terms, I think that today we have it in theory, in academical life. But there is one tricky thing with this. Because if we use only foreign, uh, foreign uh, words or terms, uh, somehow we need to deal with all these radicals who are all the time saying that it's not our originally, that we are under the influence of the West, and that we, uh, by, by that, when we are speaking about, okay, I, I completely understand you and our... <laughs> yes, 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 that's definitely. Yes. Yes, and in the literature we need to find a way how to, to uh, adopt those terms. Because, uh, you know, at the first sight, it's somehow proof for them that actually we don't belong where we live to, that we are under the impact of the West and that it wasn't our tradition. So it's the tricky one. Some time ago there was a point over there. Is it still relevant? Hello. <laughs> Oh, I actually have two questions, and the first one is also about the language and what you mentioned about offensive words, because there's a, in Serbian and Bosnian, I know for sure, there's a, a, we are so rich in those terms that are considered offensive, and is there a way, do you think that there's a way through literature to claim back those terms for us and to use them in a positive sense and not feel offended when someone uses them? And the second question is more a, a, a bit personal, maybe. Um, I don't know if that's the case everywhere, that society cuts you some slack because you're an artist and you're allowed to be a weirdo in a way. So it's okay for an artist and for a writer, for a poet to be homosexual, to be trans or queer, but for <coughs> people who don't write, who don't do art, who are not talented, who are just regular people, <laughs> It's a taboo. And do you think that from that position you can change something for those people who cannot do, do art themselves? It's for, it's for everyone. Uh, I think, yes, uh, if you are an artist, uh, you're uh, on privileged position, but in the same time you can be poor but in privileged <laughs> position to, to do something, yeah. Uh, I think, yes, you, you are right. Uh, this, is, this is possibility, to do something with language uh, and uh, to try to, to write about different uh, topics uh, on many different ways, 
and to try to do something uh, with the risk of, of language. Uh, I think that, uh, as Leila said, uh, language is al always political and uh, language, uh, language, <laughs> language is uh, always uh, ideology. So in that sense, you also can do something uh, with ideology. Uh, in, if you try to do something what is not expected, if you, for example, if you write about, I don't know, uh, post-war poverty in former Yugoslavia, uh, a, a lot of people don't, uh, uh, don't, don't expect uh, queer elements in that text, but you can write something about queer, and you can, in that way, you can say, okay, this is also normal to, to write uh, about queer and about poverty and about war and about uh, sex and uh, your teacher. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, I think this is that pri privileged position that you can do something like this. And can I just pop in shortly? Um, you were writing about old ladies, and in the Balkans, old ladies are considered the most conservative part of society in a way, but then you have this grandma who's kind of pushing her, uh, the queer identity of her child. And c can you play with that also? Like subverting some, some pictures or topics that are considered conservative and, ma and make them queer? Uh. I think, yeah, yes, I think it, it can be like this. And I would like to say something about uh, the novel uh, Paper Disco. Google, I think. Paul, yeah. pa Pauls, Pauls. Paper, Paper Disco. Disco, Google, Paper Disco, Pauls, uh, from Dragoslava Barzut from Serbia. Uh, in that her novel, uh, I told her, you, you have queer uh, old lady, grandma, actually. N not only your uh, character uh, of Elodie, uh, but all th that old grandma is the most queer, I think, because she's in that position. She is uh, old, silent. Uh, on first, uh, she's very traditional, you know. But in the crucial moments for queer, she is the best. And you know, this is the, that moment. Uh, uh, people don't accept that uh, old grandma in traditional Serbian context is queer. But she can be queer. Why not? Can I? Um, I can, can I just like? I think that uh, she was actually implying the exactly this what you were saying now when she said this when she said that she doesn't have the language in her mother tongue to talk to talk to her mother. This is the most political fight that you can have because language is political. So if you can't talk to your mother about your sexual identity, we have a problem. I don't think that the. The um, Argo is the answer here. I think what you are implying, if I understand you correctly, is that you want to have um, equal right to have all the, la all the language available that you can express yourself, and then if you want to, you can use Argo if you want to. But that this Argo isn't the only possibility that you have in order to express yourself and your sexuality. Um, which I think we all have this is same issue. We also are adopting in Slovenian uh, other words and the words that we don't have. We use, uh, Christina, we, we don't have the, no, we don't have the vocabulary also. No, no, and then yeah. one way is to avoid it because we both poets, so we don't, we don't speak about it directly because poetry doesn't speak about it directly. But this doesn't divert from the problem about the language. So I don't think this, I also agree with you more than I agree with them about this question. We need to claim the language and this is the political fight. So Leila, what you were saying, I absolutely agree with this. Yes, um, you can be in Bosnia, you can be claimed, ah, Western identities, uh, being, you being proclaimed by Western identities because you use this language with us is something else. But the topic is the same. I mean, there is a huge lag in the language, whether now you attack it with dictionary or with how we use the language, there is a huge lag of how to express yourself. And now, yeah, literature can help. Liter as you said, liter literature can help, but it can only help. There is an ontological question in the society how to address this question, no? Which, which I think you were talking about. May I add to that? Sorry. Um, I don't know about that. I don't speak any Eastern European language, unfortunately. But... Um, in Russian, we were very always uh, sort of we were adopting lots of foreign words, 
We had a few cultural waves with German in 18th century and the French after Napoleon, then English, of course. And I don't see any problem in that, uh, to be honest. I think the uh, hegemony of English language now in the world uh, is, uh, is an established fact. What can we do with that? So um, I think it's, um, for me, it's totally fine that in Russian, all the words that, the, that we use in LGBTQ uh, uh, topics are English, heterosexual, or heterosexual, well, we have Russian words for that, uh, which is also not very Russian. Uh, homosexual, lesbian, or gay, or transsexual, or transgender, or whatsoever. And uh, if I use all these words with uh, sort of normal Russian who don't have any connection with LGBT, they would understand me perfectly, because these are well-established words. From the other side, we have lots of uh, terms in LGBTQ society uh, that other people don't understand, and they wouldn't understand if they just used them in my text. And I try not to use them, honestly, uh, if I don't really need them. Otherwise, if I do really need them, I have to explain them to this, to my audience. Otherwise, would they would just put my text aside because it would be too boring and too scientific for them. As for the, um, so this is about the language. As for the other question, um, I had few experiences with my books. Like when uh, gay and lesbians uh, would read my books and they would like or dislike them, that's one thing. But the other thing is that when um, people, through my friends or through my colleagues even, who are not uh, uh, gay or lesbian, uh, would read my texts, and then they would say, oh my God, I never saw a gay or lesbian in my life. But the Russian would usually say that because they didn't write. But I read that book and I started to, to think about this topic. Maybe I, was, maybe I, was, I wasn't um, uh, like thinking or doing um, uh, rightly before. And I think this is the most important part of a queer uh, writing is uh, educational uh, sort of goal with the people who are not related to gay or lesbians, who don't have any friends or children or relatives. Um, yeah. So I think here we really can change um, the public opinion. Maybe not fast, but fast enough, but uh, well, with the time. Um, I, I, um, in, in this context, I really think I'm privileged um, as a person, as an author, uh, living in a very um, a normal, um, to me at least, and acceptive um, <coughs> circle of people. Um, and there is a quote. If I'm, if um, so, um, if um, I don't rely on myself, how can others rely on me? And if they don't rely on me, how can I rely on myself? This is a quote from a book. Um, so as a writer, I think my role is to support um, truth, to create, to, to uh, well, to uh, depict my own truth and to make others uh, read what I think and create their own truths by reading it. Since we've got this nice rhythm of, of questions from the audience, it, it would be nice to go on. So if, if any of you would like to make a point. Torsten is very eager to hand off the microphone. I just have a question. You said, you, you said you're so successful because of your niche, but who's reading it? The niche or the mainstream? Who's reading your books? <laughs> Educated people, so. but not only gays. So.
But wasn't. But my <coughs> book wasn't founded. I mean, was sell on the market to. But my book didn't have any subsidy, so. So it was some sort of a commercial success. Even if it didn't have any funding, it, it sold. May I ask a question to my fellow writers? Um, I actually, I'm interested in what you think about um, publishing in, on, on paper and publishing online. Like I can tell about myself, I, I did publish on paper, but I'm too, and I actually got some messages uh, f uh, from youngsters who were saying, we would love to read your book, it was about first book, but I can't read it because I live uh, with other people and I don't want them to see that book that I'm reading, so if it, it exists, uh, with uh, this electronic version, I would be very happy. But I'm too lazy to, <laughs> to do that, so my books don't exist in electronic version. But what, what do you think about that? If, if, is it important? Uh, would paper um, uh, disappear once and we will be reading everything online or in, in a Kindle? Or how do you, or, or you like to touch your books? Or so? I'm, I'm a very old fashioned soul, and uh, I really love paper books. But I think uh, this is the same important to, to try to have books in a traditional way, paper, but also in online. Uh, but I don't think that we, it will be like this, uh, uh, paper books will, uh, will die, disappear. I think it will be, you know, parallel, paper and online. Uh, yeah. I think, too, it is a big topic to, to discuss, uh, publish online or publish on paper. Uh, we have uh, we have some, um, um, yeah, pu not publisher house, but possibilities, platforms to publish online, but uh, we still uh, not have a, a respectful um, pub publishing possibilities online. It, uh, everybody says online publishing is uh, a little bit uh, off top. It is uh, as, uh, likely to self-publishing or something like that. Uh, people don't trust uh, it. It is uh, only information food. And I think it is a um, question, a uh, matter of time, because uh, sooner or later we will uh, have uh, some possibilities on for online publishing that will be uh, respectful, that will be... Um, uh, also promoted uh, like like publishing uh, on paper and I think uh, now it is uh, important to publish on paper because of this uh, uh, you have a publisher house you, you have this uh, possibilities to, uh, to to have the publicity and so far and so on it is not only you and your reader uh, like like it up uh, online has still has this uh, feeling. Um, in Bulgaria, there is a um, certain sense of uh, prestigious publishing when it's on paper. It's more prestigious to publish on paper. Um, so uh, uh, there can be also um, recognized that people uh, who actually are bloggers and, and uh, virtually living in this virtual space make profit from then publishing on paper later, bigger works. Uh, for me, it's uh, two different uh, realms, uh, one virtual and the other on paper, but I'm, um, I'm also interested in reading both, and uh, although I don't see them being connected.
Um, and but there are also interesting um, f uh, moments um, like the disappearance of a Hungarian newspaper uh, I used to read every day, uh, which disappeared uh, from one day to the other, um, um, and nobody knows why. No, we do. Okay. <laughs> Political reason. <laughs> с буквите, картините, съвсем съвсем различно усещане на на нещата. I personally prefer to hold a book in my hands and to see the um, the lines to the, to smell the paper to to have this haptical experience of paper. And even the physical taste of ink um, this is what I prefer. Vreau să zic și eu, oarecum în aceeași, în aceeași logică ca și colegul meu, ca și Nicolae. Uh, am văzut diminuându-se, prin trecerea asta pe online, am văzut diminuându-se două industrii, intrând în picaj. Uh, jurnalismul, ziarele și muzicale, industria muzicală, după chestia asta cu online, după moda asta. Uh, somehow in the same logic with Nicolae, I would like to add that since the um, online um, uh, became so present in our lives, I have seen two industries declining, uh, journalism and the musical industry. The problem in the musical industry is, uh, first of all, uh, piratery. Dar cel puțin în industria, în industria asta ai concertele prin care poți face bani. But at least in this uh, industry the musicians have still have the concerts and they can still make money out of concerts. Deci nu, de, în ce, și în ce privește industria cărții, câtă vreme subzistă, câtă vreme subzistă, cum zice, modelul ăsta de paper, există o posibilitate de a vinde, de a face bani. Când o să treacă pe online o să fie piraterie și o să fie bani din cărți. Uh, as far as books are, are concerned, as long as we have the printed version of books, authors still have a possibility to make some money out of their books, but when they will be online completely, then piratery will uh, conquer everything and authors won't see any money at all. So, uh, I'm, I'm not so... I'm not so de chestia asta ascensiunea online So, I'm not very delighted with this thing, with the ascension of online. Okay, I can yeah, uh, relate to the Nikolai and what I guess most or half of us said already that I like just the physical fact of the book to touch it and smell it. And also um, when it comes to my books, I can, with one of my publishers, I can also have a freedom to, to choose the design for it, which is almost, uh, well, not equally important, but also important for for my writing. Um, I was, uh, in fact, first faced with the importance of online publishing or of just sharing uh, literature by emails, which I never do, was uh, when Russian translator asked me whether I could send her uh, my book in PDF instead of giving her a copy of physical book because she said that would make it, uh, that would be a problem if she would bring it but that I don't know what that was, was like 10 years ago or something or eight. Um, so for that reasons to make it uh, uh, more available, accessible for, for people who can't for different reasons, for that uh, I think it's important, but uh, me personally, I just don't like reading books uh, online. I don't, even if I get, that, I get them, I wouldn't be reading them online. Um, it's interesting because in Russia it's the same. I mean, uh, it's more prestigious to be published on paper. Everybody likes paper. I, I, I don't know about the youngsters, though, because all of us were not, I mean, 19 years old, right? And But I'm interested in what's <coughs> the situation in Germany and the United States. What's going on with, uh, so maybe somebody from the audience can tell us, uh, with um, paper versus uh, online reading and publishing. Uh, 
maybe you can start with this. Um, uh, I don't feel that qualified because I'm not in the publishing industry, uh, but I do know, you know, it, it is a really strong market publishing online and and uh, like you mentioned, Kindle, things like downloading books. Um, but I there is a strong culture of people, and I am one of them, who are advocates for preserving printed books and creating, um, I participate in a lot of things like zine fairs, making our own printed books. And uh, so I think it's, it's a culture, but it's almost like a subculture. <laughs> Do, do readers read your book uh, on paper or online, Fabian? Um, um, for me, it, don't, um, it doesn't matter. The main thing is I, they read it. <laughs> but I think um, mostly um, it's um, on the real book, I think, because um, I'm also not online. I'm not on Facebook or Instagram, not on Grindr. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm also old-fashioned, but I think um, um, publishing in, in Germany is um, still really important for... Um, sometimes it matters to me that it um, seems to be too important because, um, yeah, it's all a bit more distinguished in, in a thing. So if you're... Um, I don't know, sometimes I have the feeling it's more about fame than about writing, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> don't know, um, Jürgen? <laughs> um, I try to get back to the topic of queer writing because I think what you said is very interesting. Um, I grew up in a very small town with 300 people living there uh, and even then I was very aware that there might be books dealing with queer issues but I didn't feel comfortable having them at home because somebody could might see them friends visiting my parents. So I think there might be a possibility of having it online and being able to explore it in a more safe way, I think. Yeah. yeah and also, online publishing is publishing. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's also a book, you know, it's not, it's not just data. So I wouldn't, uh, I'm, I'm a blogger also, so I don't, I don't understand the Romance. I, of, of course, I understand the romance of a book, but still, there is a there is a, also yeah, there are many reasons why people read a book uh, digital, and we should not uh, yeah we should treat that equally and not treat that as a second or as a as a as a, as a worse kind of, of publishing. Yeah. I also come from a small village, and it's interesting because I did it the other way. Um, I had this famous German book called Schwulner und at home and I really put it to my shelf because I didn't want to talk to my mother but I wanted her to see this book and to realize, oh, something might be weird with my son. So I had all these books and then when she talked to me, I was like, but why can't I be interested in these subjects? But then we started a conversation. So for me, this is why books became so great for my whole life because this was one way to express what I wasn't able to talk about. So, yeah, I, this is why until this day I love this book, Schwulna und, and I really appreciate the printed version. <laughs> I, would, I would like to uh, refer to the American lady we had, like, Publishing, she mentioned the word subculture, so I have now two things. There is a magazine called Subculture, which is like a party uh, a magazine from Freiburg in different towns. They have a little trick. They pu don't publish everything online, which is, it's not the same, which is in the mag. So you have advantage to get an original printed uh, issue. The same uh, was with a friend of mine was working at Blue Magazine from Berlin. Uh, which used to be called Sergei. It has the same strategy like uh, 
not publishing everything one to one online, which is printed. You understand? Like the value added you get by receiving or collecting the printed person. If you go online, you get just like the basic, uh, basic information, like what's going on, what kind of parties are going on. And with this uh, strategy, they kind of uh, were uh, even uh, was possible for the Sega magazine to charge um, five euros or so back then. I think it was euros or Deutschmark in um, local uh, in the villages. Like uh, I know a friend of mine, he said, "Ah, oh, what's going on in Berlin? Do we have the magazine? Can you send a post?" He even asked me to post it because he had to pay five euros when he wants to order from um, abroad. You understand? So it was a little kind of um, local discrimination of availability also. Like, uh, so not everybody could access it online in a whole um, manner. And in addition, you were like, uh, if you live in a big city, you also had different uh, conditions from living in a small city. So uh, this kind of differentiation uh, from accessibility, let's say so, was a kind of good uh, strategy, let's say, let's say so, uh, to make the printed uh, version uh, more valuable than the online. The online version was just for the basic information, but if you want to go into depth, you need to get the printed edition. And I don't know how I financed the magazine, the Sergey magazine, they moved into uh, also radio business. That was the online channel they used um, to kind of make their money with the advertising industry. That's what I can say about this kind of um, monthly uh, magazines. I'm not talking about books now. <laughs> Maybe you want to add something? Maybe it's too much. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a totally different situation um, when it comes to journalism and when it comes to books, because journalism is is, is a totally different product, and that's why magazines like Blue have those strategies. But I would not call Blue like a real like journalistic magazine. It's more more like uh, you know, it's about news. It's about it's a, it's about where to go out. It's about lifestyle and stuff like that. And of course, they can sell their information differently then books can be sold. So I would, not, I would not call that a strategy which, is, which, which could be transferred to, to books or to blogs, for example. It's a periodical. Yeah. Like a yeah. periodical uh, book, actually, it's a book which is like each month, a uh, new issue. You can compare it like that. Yeah, but the, but the content is different. I mean, what, what, what is Blue Magazine writing about? It's writing about parties, fashion, what to, what to wear, where to go. It's a different. It's a different kind of topic of what I think we are talking about here. I, I, I would say that, that's why I, that, I think that's why you cannot why, why their strategy of you know making money with their online product or selling it offline is kind of different. I would maybe maybe say. So um, thank you all. For this discussion, I think it's time to finish. <laughs> um, it was great to speak with you, and thanks for the audiences. Yes, it's lunch time. Okay. <laughs>